Welcome to the Get Your Act Together podcast. I am your host, Kelly Reynolds, and today I have a very exciting guest. Um, her name is Laura Sinclair. Hi, Laura. How are you today? Hi, I'm so good. How are you? Good to have you. <laughs> Great. I'm so excited to talk marketing and agency with Laura today. Uh, so, Laura, can you introduce yourself to everyone? Yeah, my name is Laura Sinclair, and if you can hear from my voice, I am Canadian, depending on where you live in the U.S., some people pick up my Canadian accent right away. Other people don't hear it at all. But um, I am a mom of two. I am a marketing expert, a business coach, and I own a social media marketing agency. And I have been in the marketing world for, oh gosh, about 15 years, um, eight years as an entrepreneur. I am super excited to talk marketing today um, and what is working, what is not, how you built everything. So I guess start off like, what does your company do? Like where, how did you get there? Yeah. Great question. You know, I'm a, I'm a human that's had a lot of pivots. So I started my career in corporate, um, like many people do and with a, in public relations. And when I started, it was sort of that, um, it would have been 2008. So I'm going to age myself and that's totally fine. But it was a time when social media was very new for business and most businesses were letting interns manage the Twitter accounts and these Facebook pages. And I was coming up at a time where I was the intern. And so I got a very fast crash course in social media, running digital marketing for really big brands and kind of grew my way through that process. Um, but always felt uncomfortable would be the word. And I never really knew why Um until I realized that there was a whole other world of entrepreneurship where I could do my own thing. Um, and so I walked away from corporate marketing back in 2014. And I actually ran a gym. Uh, I ran a CrossFit gym for five years in that period of time and really felt like, okay, I'm done with marketing. I'm done with this corporate world and all of these things. And then it's like, I'm just going to run a gym and it's going to be so fun. Well, running a gym is fun, but you also still have to do marketing. <laughs> you still have to do all of the things. Um, you know, you're mopping the floors and running click funnels at the, at the same time you're doing every job. And so for me, it was just really beautiful realization that the stuff that I learned in my corporate life and the things that a business owner goes through, you know, whether it's providing brick and mortar service or building a service agency, um, you need those skills. And a lot of small business owners don't, don't have them. And with the pandemic, um, when everything closed down for two weeks out of an abundance of caution, we all remember that in March, 2020, I was eight weeks pregnant. Um, and here in Canada, where I live, gyms were closed for quite some time. And we lost about 50% of our membership during that time because people didn't want to be paying for gym memberships they weren't using. Um, and then there was quite a culture of fear around coming back and what's safe and what's healthy. And um, my husband and I made the decision with a three-month-old at home to close our gym. And, um, this was at the end of 2020, we were sort of starting to have to put our own money. We didn't have any investors. It was just my husband and I, um, and having to look at ourselves and be like, this is not what we want to be doing for the next five years to, to get this business back to where it was. So we walked away and, and that was sort of an opportunity for me to kind of meld my two worlds. So I took what I knew as a social media marketer and what had worked for me, um, in my gym business, really growing that business, we we purchased a gym. It was, um, it was probably six months away from closing when we when we bought it um, back in 2014, 2015. I'm going to lose my lose my dates, but um, we were able to turn it around. And so the gym was making more money per month than we paid for the business pre COVID. So I realized that along the way, I met a lot of incredible business owners that are really good at what they do, but not very good at marketing themselves, not very good at filling the funnel, um, just not very good at getting their businesses seen. And that was where my business started, realizing that there was a lot that I could do to help, um, to simplify. And so in my business, I teach small business owners how to market themselves. And I also have an agency that does it for them, um, but primarily focusing on content creation, organic content creation, social media marketing, influencer management, influencer sort of outreach, um, those beautiful things. And I, I bring in partners for paid marketing and things like that. Awesome. That is a lot. I, I, it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, I'm curious on the gym thing first. Yeah. It was just, was it just a burned out thing? Like I am burned out on this marketing thing. I don't want to do it anymore. And you just needed a different thing. Yeah. So I've always been, I've always identified as an athlete. I've always loved sport. Um, and I worked in luxury automotive marketing 
Um, that was my last corporate job. I worked for a luxury automotive brand, um, which was very much a boys club. Um, and there was a lot that I fell out of love with um, marketing in that time. I think um, there's a lot of process for process sake in a company like that. There's a lot of um, men at the top in a company like that. And um, for me, it was just like, I, it wasn't, it was less about marketing and more about the confines of a corporation that really made me uncomfortable. I was tired of having to fit into this box really my entire life. I've been coloring outside the lines a little bit and been made to feel very uncomfortable by, by boxes and structure. Um, and so I think what it was really came from less about like, I don't want to do marketing anymore and more I'm tired of being in this box and I'm going to go find my own way. I was exactly the same place when I came off of Wall Street. It was a boys club, obviously. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to burn everything to the ground. I didn't want to do operations anymore, ever again. Uh, <laughs> and I uh, created a furniture refinishing business, which cool. is like, how far away can you get? Yeah. So same thing, totally understand. Um, and the idea of you coming back to marketing as I did to ops because people don't know how to do it for themselves. I think very similar stories here in a different lane, but like very similar stories yeah. because people really don't, like they do a thing. They're mm -hmm. really good at it. They start their own business and then they don't know how to do the business part of it, the marketing, the operations part of it. Um, mm -hmm. And that's where they get tripped up and they're like, but I know what I'm doing. I'm, I'm really good at this thing, but they can't find anything. They don't know how to pay their bills. They don't know how to tell people about themselves. So I find that it was very interesting, kind of the. Yeah. You know, it's world. like trying to, trying to build a house from the roof, right? Like you <laughs> yeah. can't, you yeah. can't do that. And so there's so many business owners that struggle and, you know, I owned a CrossFit gym, which is a micro gym. And, um, we did have a fair number of entrepreneurs that came into the door. So that business, you know, being a member at a gym like that is, an, is not inexpensive. So you're looking at people that, um, a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of people that are sort of in that bracket and just the number of things that I would hear them say, you know, I have a client that sticks out, you know, I spent $10,000 on a local television commercial and we got nothing out of it. And then my, and I was like, Oh, I could have told you not to do that. You know, like I, I would never advise you to do that. Like who told you that was a good idea? But, yeah. You know, these, these business owners are, they're just looking to get more eyeballs on their business and they're willing to do just about whatever it takes. And um, nine times out of 10, it doesn't go very well without, you know, having real advice and support. Yeah. I feel like they have talked to their colleagues or friends and they hear about a thing and they're like, we should do that thing. And there's not yeah. a lot of strategy involved. Yeah. I mean, I've definitely been um, guilty of this, I'm sure, over the years. Like you go and you're like, well, I'm going to post this. Or I'm going to make this. Or I'm going to do this um, yeah. and without a real strategy. So then it doesn't work. Right? It doesn't work. And it's exhausting. Because you're just spinning your wheels and you're yeah. doing all of these things and then you're burning out and you're like, well, nothing's working. And then they quit or they give up or they go under, right? And, um, you know, similarly to operations and I, I love operations. It's not my expertise at all, but I can fully appreciate how important it is. You know, without those things, that's where burnout starts to happen. And I'm a big believer that, you know, when you start to burn out in your business, like one of two things happen. You either start to resent it. You don't do good work and your clients notice and they drop off or you burn out so badly that you can no longer fulfill the mission that you set out to, to fulfill because you have nothing left. Yes. Yes. And yes. <laughs> and I feel like a lot of the people that uh, at least I came up with for like director of operations, all, all these kind of groups of operations people, they are not natural marketers and they are terrified of it. I feel like marketing seems to be a very scary thing. It seems very salesy. I know when I came through, um, I'm much easier getting on calls now and talking to people. And and but in the beginning, especially, all I thought in my head were was about the cold callers from Wall Street, just selling, mm -hmm. selling, selling, selling all day. You know, like out of a movie. Um, and it made it so yucky to me yeah. that it's taken an enormous amount of mindset. How do you deal with people when you're coming into a business and you're trying to help them with their marketing? Is that a big problem that you have? Like, do you see that mindset problem a lot or yes. are they coming to you? <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> yes, I do for a couple of reasons. I mean, one is that I think marketers in general do a really good job of trying to make marketing seem really complicated um, <laughs> yeah. when it's not. And they do that because marketers are experts at sales as well, right? There's, there's the marketing and sales really hold hands. And um, there's a lot of marketers, certainly in the online space, that do a great job of making it seem complicated so that you buy their thing. 
Um, but the other side of it is that a lot of people teach marketing from a place of pain, um, really pulling at things that are painful for people in, in order to make a sale um, when you really don't have to do that. Um, and so I think for me, one of the things that I really try to do is help my clients position their marketing from a place of desire rather than a place of pain. And when we can make that shift, things start to feel a lot better. Because at the end of the day, you know, if you're providing a service, you're helping in some way, right? And, and understanding, you know, the the pleasure and, and positivity that you can bring to a client through that helping rather than, the, you know, the pain marketing that comes from a place of you're never going to get there. Are you, you're going to be burnt out forever. Yeah, sure. Maybe those are things that people will experience, but most people don't want to market that way. And most people don't want to buy that way. And so being able to really understand what goes on for somebody's ideal client, right? What is that internal story? What is it that they actually desire rather than what is the thing that they are afraid of? What is the pain that they're experiencing? You, you need to know the pain, but you don't necessarily have to talk to them about the pain. You can talk to them about, you know, the desire and, and what they actually want. Um, and so that shift tends to be really powerful for people in order to help them show up more consistently when they know that they're talking to somebody about the good that they can do for them rather than the pain that they're experiencing. Yeah. I think now that you're talking about it, yes. Like the going from the yucky sales, I have to close a sale to look how many people I could help with this. Like yeah. I could help them make more money. I could help them take care of their families. Like that to me is a much easier way um, to feel better about it. Right. To I'm helping people instead of being yucky. Um, I will say that I fall back. It's very hard to stay in that mindset. Mm, yeah. You know, like yeah. st staying in the, oh, I'm a helper <laughs> instead of, oh, I'm a yucky sales person. Yeah. And I mean, like, I think there's a big part of that is, is belief too. And, you know, you, I always say that running a business is like one of the most powerful personal development journeys you're ever, you're yeah. going to ever go on. And I'm a mother. I, I have a five-year-old and a two-year-old and motherhood paired with being an entrepreneur, <laughs> Now there is a personal development journey you weren't you weren't ready for. I mean, I certainly wasn't ready for it, and here we are. Um, but yeah, I think I think a lot of it is is like true belief in what it is that you're doing, right? And as service providers, you better believe in what it is that you're doing. And if you don't believe in it, we need to figure out a way that you can either pivot into something that you do believe in, because if you don't genuinely believe that the service that you provide is going to make a difference in your client's life, whether that's making them more money, that's giving more, giving them more time, you know, creating less stress for them, whatever it is that you do, right, which we all do in some ways, if you don't genuinely believe that your service is going to achieve that, you need to look inside and figure out why. Yeah, that's amazing. I love it. So why you come off the gym? Why go to this? Why go to social media? Why go to content creation? Like, yeah. Is this just like something you found that was exciting or... I wish that I had a, I wish that I had a, like a really sexy answer for you. But the <laughs> truth of the matter is I was at home with a three-year-old, three month old, sorry, not three-year-old, three month old. He's not three yet. He's two. Um, and it was the easiest thing for me. And so it was something that I knew I was really good at something that I had done for a long time with great success in a variety of different ways. I had done it very well with my gym. Um, and when you are a mom and you are, you know, looking down the choice of, do I send my three month old to daycare mm. and go back to work? Or do I do the thing that I have to do that I know that I can do and do well quickly? And that was where I came from. It was knowing that, Hey, this is my zone of genius. It's always been my zone of genius. Um, I know I can pull this off <laughs> I go back to that belief thing. I know I can make a difference, so I'm just going to do it. Um, and so for me, it was a, it was a natural, a natural shift. I had to relearn some things because, um, you know, from a social media perspective, things move fast. So I had some things to learn for sure um, about, you know, different apps and TikTok certainly was not around when I was working in luxury automotive. And even if I was, we probably wouldn't have used it, but um, there's a lot that I had to learn and that was okay. But, um, you know, social media, there's lots of trends and fads and things that come and go. And Fortunately, the fundamentals are the same, you know, talking about building the house from, <laughs> from the roof, the, the foundation of a good social media strategy hasn't changed. Um, there's different like windows and doors and things you can put on it, but uh, the foundation hadn't changed. So there was some stuff that I had to learn, but 
for me, I've always been a pretty scrappy person, you know, even as a business owner, when I own the gym, things would come up and I would always be like, I'll figure it out. I'll find a way, you know, just knowing that I, I'm going to figure it out one way or another. Um, and so coming into this space again, really just came from a place. It was like, I know I can do this, so I'm going to do it. I love that confidence. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I love it. I, some days I have that and some days, well, I, I guess I, I have to, do you always have that confidence? Or no. is it okay? Just make it sure. <laughs> no, absolutely <laughs> not. You know what? It's, it's so funny that you say that. Cause I have clients, you know, I, I, I mentor women as well in their businesses. And, um, you know, they, they ask me like, how do you, how do you just do things? You just do things. I was like, yeah, I do them, but I do them scared. You know, people will say like, oh, you're just fearless. No, I'm not. I'm absolutely not fearless. I just do things and I do them scared because I'm never going to not be scared. So I've learned to push through that fear um, and honestly just do it anyway. I think some of it is because I've, I've experienced failures at different times in my life. Um, you know, certainly closing the gym was one of them, but it wasn't the first, you know, um, there's been a couple of instances in my life where I was just like, well, I, I got to figure this out now. Um, and I have been able to figure it out and knowing, you know, as an entrepreneur and the online space is, you know, where I've built most of my business, which is super cool. But I also know that I'm just scratching the surface. There's so much beautiful proof of what's possible out there, which is so cool about the internet and Instagram and LinkedIn or Twitter, wherever you hang out online, like there's so much proof of possibility. And whenever I see someone talking about their success, it's not, you know, whether they did a million dollars this year, $8 million or 200,000, whatever, whatever they made. Right. I can, I can look at that and, um, instead of it being like, oh man, I'm so far off. I see that as, wow, somebody can do that. Like I'm going to do that too. And certainly not every day you know, not every day <laughs> feels that way because it's, you know, it's not possible, but, um, at the end of the day, like if you were to ask me like point blank, do you believe that you can do this no matter what I, but the answer would be yes, even on a day that wasn't so good. Yeah. I think that's important to say, cause there are some people out there that are just always happy, right? Like they I'm present, not one of those people. <laughs> yeah. Neither am I like, <laughs> right. Like some days I'm like, I am going to rock this. And other days I'm like, I don't even know how I'm going to get through it. You know, like there is oh, that. Oh yeah. Right. My husband, my husband will joke. He'll be like, is today a good day? Like he's so, <laughs> you know, it is, it's truly a roller coaster. And I had a business mentor, um, at the end of last year or not last year being 2022, 2021, who really gave me this concept of, of trying to hold neutral energy, which okay. is something that was really helpful for me. And I am, a strategy person through and through. I tend to hang out in masculine energy a lot, um, but I'm, I consider myself to be woo adjacent. And so some of these sort of like wooey mindset um, things, practices have been really helpful for me as I've gone through this journey of entrepreneurship. And, you know, one of the things that I've really learned and come to realize is that money truly is an infinite resource. Like as a business owner, I can think of like, five or six ways to make money that I'm not doing right now that I could just add if something wasn't going well. Right. And you probably can too. Most, most entrepreneurs have that mindset, right? We've all got like, Oh, there's a business idea I could try. Like I've got, mm -hmm. there's constantly business ideas in my head. So money, money is an infinite resource, but time is not right. And so for me, knowing that when, when it comes to the waves, right, the ups and downs of entrepreneurship, because they're going to exist. I, the employee, something's going to go wrong with an employee. You're going to lose a client. Um, you're just going to have a bad day. Something's going to happen personally, trying to hold that neutral energy. So instead of allowing yourself to ride the waves, right, to get really high and really low, to just try to stay neutral, just to learn to love the process rather than always looking for the end destination because entrepreneurship is a process. And so, yes, do I celebrate when things go well? Of course, of course I do. But when things go, when things aren't going well, I try to pull myself back to that place of, of just trying to stay neutral. Like, Hey, that sucks. I'll acknowledge that sucks. I don't need to go down there into that hole because I know at some point I'm going to go up in the other direction. And that would be exhausting, right? If you're like, Oh my gosh, Oh, this is terrible. Um, that's when burnout happens. And for me, it's just like, Hey, this is part of the journey. This is the process. Um, things aren't going to go well all the time and that's okay. Yeah. I think that's, part of business. Like things go well, yeah. things don't. 
Uh, I think that we're kind of coming to a reckoning of a lot of small business, online business right now, because they started in COVID, everything was going up, right? Yeah. Every, all the online businesses, everything was going up. And now it's like, well, there's kind of this correction in different places. And everyone's like, yes. well, I, I don't like this. And I'm like, well, this is business. And I have to remind myself of that as well. Like, okay, it's a crappy day, or this is a crappy thing that happened. Like, this is part of it. It's not just yeah. all the good part. And trying yes. to, I love that idea of neutral energy. I've been thinking, there's a thing when you're uh, riding horses, when I rode horses as a kid, mm -hmm. and you're not a good rider until you fall off. Yes. Like, you're not considered a good rider. So like you have to fall off. You have to be able to like have bad things happen or have it, you know, things not go your way and be able to keep going. That's when you become a good business person. I think. Yeah. If, <laughs> if you're not, honestly, if you're not failing, you're just not trying anything new. And if you're not trying anything right. new, then you're not growing. So failure is part of it. Like you have to learn and be okay to fall into a very cold pool of mud face first <laughs> and still get up and wash yourself off and know that there's a shower somewhere, somewhere in the future. Right, I don't know fine. why I'm using all of these metaphors today, but <laughs> um, yeah, it's just part of it. It doesn't mean, it doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. It doesn't mean that um, you don't have to cry. I cry. Mm -hmm. You can cry. Go, go right ahead. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's just knowing that it's all part of the process. Yeah. This is part of it. Like, yep. And being an entrepreneur is a lot of things. Like when you were saying you have other business ideas, I'm sitting here reading the other day about how I could sell bread. I make sourdough and I garden. Amazing. I'm like, I could do, I could sell lettuce this summer. Like my brain yeah. never stops like thinking of business ideas. Um, and I think that's part of that kind of entrepreneur brain of like, all right. But what a gift. Yeah. Right? It's because awesome. It's like, I'm doing this thing now. And I genuinely believe if the thing that you're doing now doesn't work or isn't going the way you want it's because it's leaving room for you to pivot into what it is that you should be doing like all of these things are lessons now I owned a gym <laughs> now I own a social media marketing agency like you know these are not there's sure there's some things that are related um but they're very different and that's okay you know some of it is just who I am as, as my you know my human design I don't know if that's something that you're into um a little, I'm, I'm learning a little yeah okay I'm a, so I'm a manifesting generator we have lots of different ideas um and that's that's cool you know like I'm gonna be an entrepreneur for as long as I can and um hopefully forever I, I do not see myself going back um to corporate at all but I think the fact that you can sit here and know, you know, there's, I'm, I'm going to sell bread or I could sell lettuce. Like the, the money is an infinite resource. There are so many ways yeah. that you can make money. It's just being willing to open up yourself to it and also being able to take the risk. And it's like, okay, well, if that doesn't work out, that's okay too. Yeah. And like how much um, opportunity is there? Like all the things that I haven't even known, I don't know about yet. Like this year mm. could be a crazy year where I do a whole bunch of things. You know, it's yeah. like you, you think like COVID right before COVID, you didn't know any of that was going to happen, but I mean, that's like at the bad side, but like all the great things in my life, I didn't know they were going to happen a month before. No. And like, we have a whole year. Like I am so jazzed for January. <laughs> last, last year was really rough. Um, it was a lot of work. Uh, yeah. And by the end of December, I just, I did a podcast episode at the end of the year. <laughs> I just sounded tired and cranky. And now yeah. I'm just so like, okay, let's go. It's so yeah. exciting. Yeah, today as we record this is uh, the first day that my kids are back at daycare after Christmas. So I feel like I'm oh, today's like the, the first. World. <laughs> today's like the first day that I'm finally, you know, able to to focus fully on my business rather than trying to have one foot in one pool and one in the other, which uh, is never successful for for either my role as mom or CEO. But um, yeah, today feels like a good day. Yeah, I bet it's quiet there too. It's quiet and it's, it's, I'm adjusting <laughs> the majestic but, quiet. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Oh, you know what? It's so fun when they're home. Like it's chaos, but, uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'll be recording some episodes of my own podcast today. I'm recording with you. So I'm, uh, I'm very thankful for, for the space as much as I love them. The space is important and needed. Yeah. For me. Yeah. Like everyone needs space their own, you know, like we, he likes to go off and read without me, you know, like mm. everyone needs a little space sometimes, yeah. especially after like two, three weeks at Christmas. That's rough on a business. It's rough yeah. on a, it's rough on a brain, frankly. Yes, it is. It really so, is. all right. So you have an agency. Yes. How did that happen? So you, all right, let me just recap. COVID happens. Mm -hmm. Jim's gone. Going to pivot to social media. And now you have an agency. Mm -hmm. How did you grow that all so fast? <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, 
It's a, thank you for, for naming that, by the way, that that is insane. Um, <laughs> I don't often, I don't often give myself enough credit for that. So I started really just teaching, teaching people how to do it. I, you know, developed, um, what was at the time a six week course. It's now actually a year long program that I still offer, um, essentially teaching small business owners, how to build a social media strategy for their business. So how to do it all themselves. Like, what do you actually need? Because I really genuinely believe that a lot of marketers do a great job of making it way more complicated than it has to be. It's it's really not a complex thing. It's just, are you executing it properly or not? Um, do you have a strategy? So I, I was teaching that. Um, and then as I was teaching it, start, people started to ask me, hey, do you do done for you social media marketing? And I was like, ah, I mean, I could. So, you know, in the early stages of my business, I took on a couple of clients and was doing it myself. Um, but I really was struggling with doing it myself because it wasn't, it didn't light me up. I was good at it. I am good at it, but it didn't light me up. Um, and so I started to realize that, oh, you can hire people fractionally. I don't have to hire an employee. I can, I can hire, you know, I don't have to bring somebody on on salary to start building my team. I can hire, you know, a freelancer on a fractional basis to offload, you know, the things that I, that I don't enjoy doing by myself. So, um, one of the things that I always, I always tell my clients whenever you're looking at hiring, right. I made a list of every single thing that I was doing in my business, everything. Um, and then I had to look at, okay, what do I love and what don't I love? And what I love is strategy. What I love is talking to clients. What I love is coming up with ideas what I don't love is the doing. I don't, I'm a great, I'm an excellent writer. I'm a, I, I'm not, I wouldn't call myself a copywriter, but I can write better than most. Um, but I don't love writing for other people. <laughs> I love to write for myself. Um, I'm a very creative person. I love creating graphics, but not for other people. And so I realized that there are elements of my business that I can hand off to other people, train to do it the way that I want it, or people that are better than me. Right. I, I can't, I don't have to be a jack of all trades. I want to hire people that are better than me at certain things. Um, and so it really just started there. It started with hiring people fractionally. And then as the agency grew, giving them more hours, bringing home more people, um, finding partners. And so I've been able to build a team that way. And so it was just came from me recognizing that, hey, I can either do this myself and not love it, or I can pull apart the things that I don't love, pay other people to do them and stick to the stuff that I love and I'm really good at. And so that was kind of where it came from. And it's just kind of snowballed from there. So what does your team look like now? How big is it? Who's on yeah. it? Yeah. So I have four people on my team. So there are five of us. We run a relatively lean team. Um, the agency is, is boutique in focus um, because I desire to have my hand in all of my clients work. I don't, um, I have no desire to like take in a client and then pass it off and never look at it. I worked in that agency model before for someone else's agency, um, where I had, you know, seven or eight people working for me before I was in luxury automotive. I worked in marketing agencies where we were, you know, we were running 30, 40 clients banging stuff out as a bit of like a content generation machine. And it's just not a model that I desire for my life. It's insane. You know, I have questions <laughs> about the quality of, of client service at least the way that, you know, I choose to run my business. So we run a boutique model. I have four people on my team. I have a copywriter. I have two graphic, or I have a graphic designer, a copywriter, um, sort of an admin who helps me with things like engagement, things like um, post scheduling, that kind of thing. And then I have what I, I call my 20 something because um, she's great at trends. <laughs> she stays on top of all of our trends. Uh, great with video and TikTok. So that's how we manage everything through my team. Uh, there are five of us. So it's uh it's lots of fun, but we, we run relatively lean and, and that works for us. I find it very interesting that the staying, you want to be in the business. Um, I mm -hmm. tend to do that as well. I know a lot of other people talk about agency is like the pinnacle of that is to take the work and delegate yeah. it out. So you're never really there and more power to them if that's their thing. But I've yeah. never been able to really want to do that. Like I still want to know what's happening. Yeah. Uh, and so thank you. I feel like. I feel yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just, you know, I don't, that's just not what I desire. I'm yeah. a, I'm a deeply, like deeply caring relationship focused human. And while, you know, there are heads of agencies and people that I know that are, that lead much larger agencies than I run. Um, 
but I just, I don't want to run the volume model. I've, I've lived that life. I've been, you know, with under somebody else's umbrella running that agency under somebody else's name, um, earlier in my life. And I didn't like it. And so, you know, for me, I know that there'd be very little point for me to try to replicate a model that I know doesn't align with what I actually desire in my business. Um, but for me, I also, you know, it's not my only business, right? I also do the coaching and the teaching that still exists. And um, and that's part of it. You know, there may be a day where where we grow past it. But for me, I my desire is to have, you know, a higher ticket client receiving a higher touch service. Um, and the investment reflects that rather than running a volume model. Yeah. I mean, that's how we've always been. We've had less clients, larger clients that we took yeah. very good care of. Um, and people that want to invest in that, right? Like there's, yeah. you can go and get social media marketing for $500 a month if you want. I wouldn't, <laughs> but <laughs> it, it's there. Yeah. Right. You know, um, that's just just how involved do you want the leaders of that agency to be? And I just care about people. I care about people and I care about their business. And for me, I don't just want to like, I don't ever want to be a business that just creates social media posts and throws them up there. Like I genuinely, I, you know, I call us a social business agency more than I call us a social media marketing agency um, because I genuinely care about your bottom line too. You know, is this working? Are we actually generating sales from this process? Um, are people clicking through to your site? Is that happening? If it's not happening, then we got to figure out why, right? It's not just about how many followers you have on Instagram. So I think for me, yeah. um, yeah, I just, I desire to have relationships with my clients. I've been in agency models with volume models. We had 210 members at the gym. I just don't want, I don't want to have to know that many people. And so I, I think that that's okay. You know, I think at the end of the day, when it comes to running agencies, you can run it however you want. You know, is there more money in a volume model? Probably, but it also doesn't align with the kind of life that I want to live, right? If I had 50 clients that wanted my attention all the time, no, thank you. Yes, that's exactly it. Like, I don't want to have a whole bunch of smaller clients, the chaos in that and knowing all the things and and being involved in like, yeah, I don't want that. No, no I can't meaningfully do that. No. And I know that about myself, but I also am a type of person that wants to take a day off randomly in the middle of the week if I desire, if I desire to. And I want to drive my kids to school and pick them up every day <laughs> because I can. And so for me, you know, a lot of it, I'm a, I'm a firm believer that your business exists to serve you and not the other way around. Um, and getting into that volume model without a team that you really, truly trust and then employees that's like a whole other thing. I am a person that just desires simplicity mm -hmm. and having a lean team allows me to pay my, my staff really well to pay for the things that I desire in my life. And that's enough for me. Yeah. I think that that's a big thing that I try to talk about as much as possible because you need to have the business you want. And that's the mm -hmm. whole point of doing all this, all the crazy, living through the bad and the good is that you get the business you want instead of what someone else told you to do. Yeah. And, you know, I can look at, you know, even just this year, right at the end of the year, I looked at, you know, we we're looking at our numbers and, you know, we doubled our revenue in 2022 over 2021. And I said to myself, if I worked half as much and made half as much money, it would have still been enough. And I probably would have had more fun. Mm. And so for me, my word for this year is actually joy. 2023, my word is joy because I want nice. to have more fun. Um, and some of that is looking at, you know, the model that I'm running my business. How do I get out of more things? I'm still doing too much, which I think is really common for an agency owner. It's like, okay, it's time to, for me to go to the next level and get out of more roles that I'm doing that I probably don't need to be. And well, not probably, definitely don't need to be while still maintaining the, you know, the, hands-on, um, hands-on rather than hands-in, you know, um, yeah. sort of approach. And, um, so looking to add more people to the team, looking to just really set myself up in a way that is more aligned, you know, like I, I care deeply about my health. I mean, I owned a gym, so being able to exercise 
move my body every day to, you know, get a massage, take care of myself, do the things that make me happy. I actually, I haven't, it's so interesting that you brought up horseback riding because I haven't done it since I was a kid. And I felt this like really strong pull to take that up, you know, nice. again, even though it's been 30, no, not 30 years. I'm not that old. So like 25 years, probably since I've been on a horse. Um, and so just things like that, you know, I want to, I want to chase joy a little bit or, um, experience joy. I'm not sure joy is something you can actually chase, but, um, for me, that's just a business model that works for me. I don't need to have 50 clients to experience success. You know, if I had 10 to 12 and that's sort of the goal, 10 to 12, we're not there yet, but high ticket clients that desire, you know, high level strategy in their business, they desire, um, to work with me and my team, because that's what you get. It's not like, Hey, I'm going to sell to you. And then I'm going to pass you on to somebody that I'm going to introduce you to and good luck with them. Um, which again, I I'm not knocking that model. It's just not what I desire. Um, that would be enough for me. That'd be more than enough for me because I I'm also doing so many other beautiful things and supporting, I, you know, my, in my coaching business, I tend to support ambitious entrepreneurial mothers because that's a topic that's really, really close to me doing that too. And so, yeah, I think, I think you can build whatever agency model you desire as long as it brings you joy. And yes, you want to be profitable. Yes. You want to have the clients and do all the things and experience the growth. But at the end of the day, if you are a slave to your business, something's got to change. Yeah. And I think people get really caught up in the, I have to make more next year. I have to mm -hmm. make more. I have to make a, whatever that thing is, six figures, seven figures, whatever the thing is sure. and people. Um, and then they forget what, what they did this for, right? Like they mm -hmm. left corporate so they could drive their kids to school. Me too. Like I want to be there. I want to hang out with my kid. And then all of a sudden you're working so much that you don't see your kid anyway. You're just working in a different mm -hmm. place. And yeah. it, it, it's hard. It's really hard. I mean, and this year, you know, my daughter's five and this is the first year that it's been like, mommy, why are you on your phone so much? Oh like, yeah. Oh, yeah. God, just punch me right in the face, you know, like, oh, right in the feelings with that one. Yep. Um, And yeah, I think, you know, for me, there was a financial target that I was chasing in 2022 and I hit it and it was great, but I hit it and I didn't feel excited. I hit it and I felt yeah. tired and it was like, ooh. And so, you know, I haven't, I haven't had a chance to anchor it in because, you know, my kids were home and I'm, you know, intending to, to spend some time like anchoring that in more. But I looked at my husband, I said, we hit it, but I'm not happier. I'm just the same. In fact, I'm actually really tired. And so when I came to that realization, like, no, I could make half as much money and be great. It was just, it was like this big sigh of like, right. Whew, you can get what, off that hamster wheel. Yeah. I'm, the, I'm like, no, more, I will more, not more, be more. on it. Right. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm not on it. I'm happy to, um, market from desire. I think when you start, you get on that hamster wheel, right. That's when it's easy to go back into pain because we feel that like desperation in our business. And no, I, I will say, I consider myself really fortunate to be in a place where I can be like, wow, that was too much. I'm going to do less and still be able to you know, feed my family and pay my bills and do all of those things. You know, I'm very fortunate that I have built a business that, that allows me to do that. And I also think it's important to caveat that getting your business to that place is really hard work. I don't want to discount any of that. But um, when I look at last year, <laughs> which, you know, as a business coach, somebody that coaches people in their business, like it seems like a weird thing to say, but it's like, no, like I don't, it's not that I don't want to make more money. And in fact, we probably will make more money in 2023 than we did in 2022. That's just the trajectory of the business, but I'm not going to be doing it in the way that I did in that constant, that chase, that grind. I'm going to do it in a place that's like, look, here's who we are. Who's we do. I'm going to have conversations with wonderful people like you and spread my message that way and know that you know, there's somebody on the other side hearing this that is going to be like, yes, I'm going to work with Laura. And that's okay. And if that person comes a year from now, they come tomorrow, it, you know, I know that it'll happen because money is an infinite resource. And I just want to go and experience joy. And I know that it's all going to work out. Yeah. Loosening your grip is usually yeah. when better things happen. Mm -hmm. Like you're holding on so tight. You yeah. need to get the sale. You need, you know, and instead, if you're like, hey, 
this is how I can help you. I am here when you need it. Like I am, exactly. I am a terrible quote unquote salesman in that way, because I don't try to get the sale in mm -hmm. that call and, and pressure, pressure, pressure. And, um, I have been told that you, you know, I should really work on that. And I'm like, I don't want to be that person. I yes want to say, no. look, you know, yeah. this is what I can help you with. You know, do people need help to make better decisions? Probably. Um, but I don't want to feel like, I'm trying to sell stocks. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like that, just sell it no matter what. Yeah. I think what's so interesting about sales mm -hmm. is that a lot of people teach yuckiness. That's just, that's just the, the word I'm going to use. And yep. in my experience, the harder you push somebody to buy from you, the worse of a client they are. And Ooh. being in the gym, being in the gym world, Owning a gym was the best crash course in sales I could have ever had. I was probably, I've been in over a thousand sales environments. Like I have sold, I've had an opportunity to sell a lot of times. And my first business coach that I ever had was actually in my gym business. Um, and they taught handling objections and they taught handling objections in a way that I never, I could never get excited about. And, you know, now the way that I handle objections is very different. And I'll, I'll give you sort of a taste of what that looked like. And, um, you know, the, the, not the most common objection in a gym environment is I need to talk to my husband or I need to talk to my wife, um, before I, you know, commit to the six month membership, whatever. Fine. The way that this coach wanted it taught was for you to say, okay, let me just step out of the room so you can call them. And I will let you do that. I could never, that those words would never come out of my mouth. Like I just couldn't. Right. And, um, there were a few instances I can think about a few members that I had that came in and that, you know, I consider myself to be pretty good at sales after having all of that practice and seeing a lot of things, um, who came in and I would, I, I don't want to use the word push cause I hate using it, but I would talk them into making the purchase and they ended up being the worst members, right? They complained or they didn't show up or they, they just never committed. They, they, because I was the one that committed for them. They need to lead themselves. People can lead themselves. And if you are capable of articulating what it is and how you help clearly, which can take some practice, right? Let's not, I don't want to discount that, but if you can get on a sales call, connect with a human, right? Just be a human. A lot of people get really scared just be a human, be yourself. It's okay. Like it's not, a, it's not a pass fail. If you can articulate what it is that you do clearly and they say, I need to think about it or, you know, I'm just not really sure. The only thing that I will ever really say is like, is, are there any questions that I can answer for you? Anything you're not sure of that I could answer now? And they may say, no, I just got to think about it. I'll be like, okay, great. I'll be here when you're ready. Yes. Because those people that you pushed to do it, you will have to prove to them why they sold like constantly exhausting prove that you're worth it. And that right. is so awful to be in. I've been in that position where so I convince someone that they should sign up with us. And then they're always looking for why it's not working or they're always looking for you to show your worth. And that's exhausting because we're doing a great job over here, but they want, they have questions on every single thing we've done. Instead, yeah. someone who's super excited to work with us and comes in as like, I know you can, uh, you can handle this. You're an operations expert, like whatever it is, they're so excited. Then we get going and there's the energy is totally different. Yeah. So yes, now that you're saying that, yes, that is so true. Yeah. Let people lead themselves. Yeah. Right. And, and our jobs as marketers is to give the information as clearly as we can. Yes. We want to entice, right? Yes. We want to make it exciting, but the rest of it is up to them. You know, sure. You know, I will follow up if there was somebody that I connected with that I was like, wow, they would have been, they would be a really great client. I know I could really help them. You know, I may be like, Hey Kelly, I just wanted to like, just check in, see if you had any other questions for me, but I'm not going to be like, Hey, let me also give you the top 10 reasons why you too should hire my agency. Like, <laughs> you know, like, let me handle your objection. Like, no, thank you. That's not the, those not the relationships I desire. And so I think, you know, when it comes to selling and being in those environments, I would really encourage anybody listening to think about what do you desire out of your client relationships, right? Do you want a relationship with a client where you've had to strong arm them into being a part of your agency? Or do you want a relationship where the client has willingly and lovingly 
come in and is genuinely excited to work with you because they made the decision. Our job is to articulate the information and do it clearly in a way that's exciting. Their jobs is to make the decision. Don't make it for them. I love that. I love that. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, as we wrap up here, uh, thank you so much for being here. This has been fantastic. Um, I love the, you don't have to be yucky salesperson uh, no. <laughs> message here. <laughs> yeah. Where can everyone find you? Yeah. The easiest place to find me is I hang out on Instagram a lot. That is the easiest place I'm at. It's Laura Sinclair. I'm sure Kelly will put the link in the show notes for you. I will. Um, that's the easiest place. Otherwise you can find me online at www.laura-sinclair.com. That's my website, but Instagram is the easiest place. And if you have made it this far in this podcast, we're officially friends now. So feel free to send me a DM <laughs> and say hi so we can connect. Awesome. Thank you so much, Laura. It has been a, such a treat to talk to you today. Thanks for having me. And I will talk to everyone else soon. Thank you so much for joining me this week. If you have an agency or want to create one, come join my Facebook community, Get Your Agency Together, where we talk all the things growing and scaling your agency. For show notes and more info on all the things, head over to ReynoldsOBM.com. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook at ReynoldsOBM. And finally, if you enjoy this podcast, I would love for you to give us a review on iTunes. Hey, editor. That's okay. Edit this My out. editor just turned on the coffee grinder. Hey, so. editor, edit this out. <laughs> do, 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 do. Uh, what were we talking about before we? <laughs>